Welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Jack, and today we are reviewing the entire collection of every single Lego Simpsons minifigure ever made. This collection comes in pretty big at 44 minifigures plus Snowball 2 and Santa's Little Helper. This uh, pretty legendary cartoon series came to life in Lego back in 2014 with the Simpsons house set, along with the collectible minifigure series, well, the first of the collectible minifigure series for the Simpsons figs, and that's what we're gonna start off with right now. So number one in the series is a classic Homer Simpson fig. I think the most iconic part of this character and really the main characters for all of these minifigures is the custom mold for his head. It really is quite detailed and I like that even the two hairs that go across the top of his head have just the slightest uh, bump on there to indicate that there is even some dimension to the hair on his head. He comes with the simple print that shows his collared white shirt, a bit of a belly. He comes in at four dollars and let's move on to number two for this series. This is Bart Simpson and this is pretty much the classic version of the character. He's got his skateboard which has got a nice print on the front or the top I should say and really what makes this Bart unique as a minifig is that he's got this print that shows a uh, slingshot sticking out of his back pocket. I'm a little disappointed that print doesn't match up perfectly well but he is a three dollar minifig and let's move on to Marge and just like you'd expect she's in her very recognizable green dress. The print shows a red beaded necklace and the accessory she has is a pink purse shaped to look just like the one that she has in the show and the tile piece in her hands says fancy donuts or donut fancy. The mold for her head I think is uh, pretty much the most impressive minifigure head mold that you can pretty much get and this minifig comes in at around two dollars. Next up is Lisa. There she is wearing a red dress very similar to Marge just the uh, cloth piece used to show the sort of bottom frill is a little bit shorter and it's also like spiky or serrated. Similar to the mold for her head she comes with a uh, saxophone piece and Lisa sells for three bucks. Now Maggie has a very similar mold to Lisa's head. I think there's just less spikes on her head and she's lucky enough to come with a specially molded piece that makes up her body. I would have thought that made her a little bit more sought after than the average fig, but she does come out to around 250, but she does have one of uh, the best accessories, which is Bobo, Mr. Burns' old teddy. Now, Grandpa Simpson, being the last of the Simpsons clan, looks pretty good. I like the uh, print that they have for his uh, collar. The mold for his head really does look as funny as uh, it does from the show, and he seems to have some sort of newspaper article talking about how sort of crazy and senile he is. He comes out to four dollars and let's check out one of my personal favorite characters from the series this is Ned Flanders the green sweater with the pink collar of the top I think is one of the more iconic and recognizable bits of a clothing combination you can have and the mold for his head is awesome he comes with a mug that says I heart southpaws and he's got his tool chest or his toolbox Ned is marked at around 250 which is pretty cheap but not quite as cheap as this next guy we've got Krusty the clown and he's probably one of the easiest figures to actually find right now he's like one dollar brand new on Bricklink. That doesn't mean he's lacking in any way, shape, or form. He's got a great print, an awesome mold for his head, and a very simple yet completely appropriate accessory, and that is a cream pie. Now, Millhouse is number nine in the collection, and he's probably like the simplest fig because he's one of the few guys that doesn't actually have any printing on his body whatsoever. He just has the, of course, custom mold for his head, and he's got a custom print that shows uh, one of his favorite comics. And the only other thing that I think is worth pointing out is that there's a little bit of red printing sort of missing on the the back of his glasses and you can see a bit of that yellow poking through. Now next up is I think a lot of people's fan favorites. This is Ralph. The printing on the top of his head to show his uh, kind of funny looking haircut is great. I always thought it was awesome that Ralph had a belt on and it looks like he's got a print that is Lisa's Valentine's Day card. He goes for around three fifty, and so does Apu. This is a pretty common uh, shirt that you sort of see him wear with the open chest. He's got himself a squishy in his hand and actually uh, sort of the shape of his head and hairstyle makes him one of the tallest of the figs from the collection. Now next up is Nelson. The town bully. Like always, the mold for his head really does look as good as it possibly could. And Nelson has some very basic printing. And as you can see from a lot of the shorter legs from the minifigs in this series, these sort of dual molded legs that uh, show the shoes and shorts at the bottom. Nelson is about 350. And now I'm just so glad that they decided to make Itchy and Scratchy minifigs. Itchy is looking awesome. I really like the dual molded arms with blue and orange. That's like super unique. I doubt we're going to get a minifig with the same color combination for the 
arms. And the mold for his head is great. You can definitely see the um, psychopathic nature hidden beneath that blank stare. He is $3, just like Scratchy. And I gotta say, I think Scratchy, I think, is my favorite of the two, just because I feel like it's always worth rooting for the underdog, or the under cat in this case. Scratchy's got the sort of dumb yet determined expression within the mold. And I'm glad that Lego opted to give him a little bit more of a deadly weapon. I know these characters are probably some of the most violent minifigures ever produced within the Lego franchise, and it's awesome that they that they gave him an axe. Now, the second to last fig to show up in the uh, first series, collectible series for The Simpsons, is Police Chief Wiggum. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this fig. I think he's awesome, but because we do get Police Chief Wiggum in, I think, the Quickie Mart set, it would have been way cooler for this to be Lou. Either way, the detailing fits totally fine. He comes with a baton and a megaphone. His price is around $4, and let's move on to the most expensive and the last of the uh, collectible series for Simpsons number one. This is Mr. Burns. Not only is the mold for his head awesome, but he also comes with two of the best accessories, I think. He's got the glowing plutonium rod and a fish bowl with the print of the three-eyed goldfish. That's so awesome. And oddly enough, his final price comes out to $9 brand new, which is about twice as much as any of the other figs. He's not really much more rare than a lot of the other ones. There were less of him in uh, the box distribution than maybe some of the more common figs, but not less than like I think seven or six other characters from this same collectible series. Perhaps he just uh, resonates a little bit more with fans and he's a more popular character to get. But anyways, uh, that's the distribution for series number one. And now let's check out set number one. This is the Simpsons house, which pretty much included the entire Simpsons family plus Ned Flanders. Starting off with Bart though, this is the uh, character where he is looking to the left. So the print on his face is a little bit different. His eyelids are halfway down. He looks almost drowsy though. And uh, this character also doesn't come with the print for the slingshot in his back pocket. He's pretty much totally blank. Personally, I don't think he looks quite as good with the sort of expression on his face, but that's just me. He is a $4 fig and now here is Homer. The difference in printing that makes him unique is of course, it's Homer coming back straight from the power plant. So he's got his tie and his name card still tucked onto his shirt. He comes holding a briefcase and also the printing for his face shows his eyelids halfway down. So he actually probably should look tired considering he's just coming home from work. Though I have to say, I think just the neutral eyes wide open is still just a general better look for these Simpsons characters. Homer is about 350 and now let's move on to Lisa Simpson. The difference with this minifig is that she's got sort of a worried expression on her face, actually pretty much the same kind of print that we got for Maggie from the collectible series before, except Maggie was kind of looking in a direction. Lisa seems to be staring straight forward. I'm not entirely sure why she looks worried. She is holding a card that says A+, plus because, well, that's just the way Lisa rolls. She is $2, and then let's move on to Maggie, whose expression has now changed to just the wide-eyed open look. Pretty much uh, switching around expressions seems to be the only thing that makes this particular version of her exclusive. She is also two bucks, and then we actually have a bit more of a different version of Marge. She is wearing an apron, so she must be preparing dinner. So that means the print on her torso is different, as well as the print on uh, the piece that makes up the bottom half of her dress. The expression on her face, once again, is different. I mean, they really did have to make these expressions, uh, I guess, exclusive somehow. I'd say she's about $4. Now let's move on to Ned Flanders, also with an apron, but this is because he is uh, barbecuing outside. The print reads, Hail to the Chef. He comes with a spatula, and I believe the expression on his face is actually the exact same one from the collectible series. He's about four bucks. And now let's jump up to the year 2016, where basically the second half of all the minifigures for the Simpsons series were released. Let's check out the collectible series. Series, uh, series number two first. And going in order of the numbers they have from the collectible card, let's start with Homer Simpson again. This time it is him uh, dressed quite nice. I thought it was for church, but then I remembered the Valentine's Day episode and there he is holding a box of chocolates. The suit print for his torso is actually more simple than your average suit print that I think you get for a regular Lego fig, but it mimics the art style quite well. And this Homer is priced at around 250. Now Marge is dressed up for the same occasion. And here there's a lot of really good things about the character, the dual molded arms with the long white gloves is really nice. The print that shows her purse on the tile piece is a really good touch actually and I'm surprised they haven't decided to reuse that part so much. Also she's wearing lipstick and comes holding flowers. This is probably one of the most complete of any of the collectible characters but it seems the price of these figs are entirely based on their general popularity. She's two dollars and then the next character Lisa is also dressed to impress. She's wearing the pink dress so I think this is actually what she would wear to church. So of course the prints in uh, her skirt and everything are exclusive just to the character. And last but certainly not least, this is the only way to get Snowball 2, the cat. Excellent mold.
sold for the cat. They really did a, a sort of a top-notch job. She is two dollars and also next up is Maggie. This is uh, not an exclusive fig at all. This is actually the exact same Maggie that I showed off before from the house. The only thing exclusive about this release with her is the fact that she does come with uh, Santa's little helper. Let's be real, he and Snowball 2 should have come in the Simpsons house set. But anyways, that's the only way to get him. Let's move on to Bart. And Bart is not dressed uh, like he's going to be going to any sort of formal event. Not only is he dressed as Bartman, but with the previous version of the guy having um, a slingshot printed in his back pocket, now he actually comes with a really well molded piece that makes up the slingshot anyways. His shirt's a different color now. And of course, the mold for his mask and cape on his back match in purple. I thought he'd be more expensive. He, like so many of the other ones, are around 250 And uh, now let's check out his partner in crime or fighting crime. This is Milhouse's Fallout Boy. Also a very complete character. I really like the sort of combination of yellow, blue, and green. He's got the dual molded arms with the green gloves. He's holding a uh, bottle of Buzz Cola. And even the pupils are printed a little bit different. He looks a bit more determined. Definitely a solid fig. And I feel the same way about Comic Book Guy. His head is almost comically too big compared to the minifigure body. This is the only one where it feels a little bit odd. I feel like it could have been just a smidgen smaller, but still he looks awesome with the uh, belly coming out underneath the shirt in the front. The legs have some wonderful printing. We very, very rarely see a print go all the way up to the uh, joint at the top. Usually the base color of the legs starts at the top and then the bottoms are printed in, but not this case around. So that's actually quite unique. He's holding an everyman comic and a squishy in his hand. He looks like he's having a pretty good time and he's priced at basically 250, pretty much the same price as most of the figs from this series. Now next is Martin Prince. I think this is the only version of any of the figs that has uh, orange for the shorts and uh, shoes at the bottom. And his unique accessory is a book that says coping with a high IQ. Now also suffering from the same affliction is Professor Frank. One of the best aspects of this character is that we have a scientist body with a bow tie and pink pants. We're not gonna get that combination probably ever again. And for that alone, this minifigure should be applauded. Now next in line was kind of an unexpected character to get as part of the collectible series. This is Hans Molman. He's what I would call probably like the most prominent background character. I don't think he ever talks really, or if he does, you can barely hear him. He's holding a void uh, driver's license in his hand and his head is very shrunken indeed. He sells for about 350. And the next two figs are Marge's sisters. We've got Selma and Patty. Selma in blue, Patty in pink. Their hairstyles are somewhat similar though different and the prints for their bodies are pretty much identical of course uh, aside from their color combinations. Now getting towards the end we have Groundskeeper Willie. He's certainly one of the most striking characters at least for the mold on his head because of his red hair and his uh, beard. I like the detailing that shows the hair on his arms and we get the best piece used for a uh, plunger. And This is also uh, another one of the parts that we really don't see used very often in other Lego sets where I feel like once the mold exists it would be awesome to get more of these pieces maybe even used um, within a building context. It does have a little bit of a suction action there. And then next up is Edna Krabappel. This is uh, Bart's teacher. One of the figs that absolutely should look like she's tired. Definitely uh, the most appropriate face to have sort of the half eyelids. Well, that and maybe uh, Selma and Patty. But there's just a couple more minifigs left in this collection. So let's check out Waylon Smithers very quickly. He's got himself an olive green uh, suit jacket. You might be able to recognize the collectible Stacy doll in the box. And uh, there he is with the uh, sort of flat top haircut. Now the last numbered fig for the series is Dr. Hibbert. Great mold that makes up the head. You can really see and sort of almost hear that infectious laugh of his. And of course, in his hand is the x-ray of Homer's head. Now, the second set and final set of the series was the Quickie Mart. So let's check out the figs from here. Now, of course, this is uh, Apu's shop. So here is Apu. He is dressed in his Quickie Mart uniform, which is basically just, uh, you know, the different shirt for it. He's got his name Apu on the name tag there. And he is a little bit harder to get your hands on considering he's only found in this set, at least in this version of him. So he's around $5. And then checking out Homer Simpson again, there's pretty much nothing special about the guy. In fact, the minifigure is not exclusive. He just comes with different accessories in his hands, basically. So he's just a dollar. Bart Simpson 2 is basically not exclusive. He has the body of one previous Bart, the head of another. And uh, the accessory that he at least is coming with when you build him in the set is uh, this black 
fire extinguisher. Marge is very much like Homer in so much as that she's not exclusive, except the uh, accessory, the shopping basket that she comes with is, I think, an exclusive piece. The mold for it is. It's a bit rubbery, nice color. And then we get a, another police chief, Wiggum. The uh, difference about him this time is that now he's got a little bit of a uh, jelly donut spilled on his uh, uniform. And well, that's basically it. That printing difference uh, makes him just about five bucks. And then our last minifig of the series, this is Snake, allegedly, the guy that Wiggum is probably going to be arresting in this set. And he's actually the second most expensive from the collection, coming in at around eight dollars. It looks like he managed to get himself a squishy, and we can only imagine that the contents of the bag he is making off with is probably uh, the register cash or something. The detailing for the head is nice. I like that they included the single earring around one ear and not the other. And of course, he has the awesome snake tattoo on his arm where the tail of the snake is actually cut off by the sleeve of the shirt. That's a really nice little detail. And guess what? We just finished off the entire Simpsons collection. I have no idea if they're going to be doing another collectible series or do more Simpsons sets. I don't know if they still have the license. Lego still has the license to make Simpsons sets. But if they ever do make anything within the same Simpsons universe, I would really love to see a sideshow Bob. All right, that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And if you have any ideas about another Lego minifigure collection you want to see in the future, let us know in the comment section below and someday we'll hopefully get to it. Or you can actually check our uh, video playlist and there's a chance we may have already done that Lego collection if you just found our channel recently. So anyways, that's it for this episode and uh, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Thank you.